Welcome, dear friends, to my YouTube channel at GMATS41. Today, in this video, I'll be teaching you how to carry out reading, all right, from this experimental verification of Ohm's law, which, of course, you remember I taught you how to carry out the experimental circuit setup in my previous video. I hope you watched and enjoyed the setup of that uh, circuit. Here again, you have the circuit, the circuit setup shown here. So what we're going to do is to find out how we take readings. Are you following, right? We are going to be changing the values of this resistor. And then, of course, uh, we would get the corresponding potential difference from this voltmeter so that we would get a table of value of resistance. We're going to run for 1 ohm resistance, 2 ohms, 3 ohms, 4, 5, and 6 ohms, okay? And then uh, corresponding to the resistance values, we would get the value of the potential difference. And when we do this, we are going to evaluate the inverse of resistance, the inverse of, uh, of the potential difference, so as to plot the graph for this experiment and determine a quantity, the internal resistance of this cell, okay? All right, so let us go ahead and see how we carry out the reading of this experimental verification of Ohm's law. All right, let us go back to our instruction. We are to remove or open the key and record the voltmeter reading E. You can see my key is not closed. It's already opened. Are you following, right? So we are to keep it open and then record the voltmeter reading E. And then look at what I used to close the key. It is open. So at this point, I can record the voltmeter reading. Normally, after I completed this circuit, as you are saying, this uh, pointer of the voltmeter is meant to read to this point. It's meant to read this way. But the reason why it's not reading is because uh, this, my battery, you know, I'm not using battery casing. I'm sorry about that. I don't have it yet. I'd like to I'll provide that in a, maybe a subsequent video, but whatever the case is. All right, this is what we are now going to do. There is no tight connection here, okay? Possibly there is a bridge between where I connected these two batteries. So what I'm going to do is to hold this point and this point with my finger, I'll hold it tightly. You won't have this challenge in your laboratory workplace. Take note because I am pretty sure that your lab technologies will provide you with uh, the battery casing, which already has point of contact. So you wouldn't have this issue of using uh, this stuff to hold it. You know, uh, I use masking tapes. You wouldn't need this masking tape. But if it happens that you are not provided with battery casing, you have no choice. Usually we use this masking tape to connect these two batteries together. And uh, of course, once your voltmeter is not reading at this point, you know that the challenge is from these terminals of the battery. All you now need to do is make sure you hold these two points together and press them together. Is that okay? Now, I am going to do that, please. I'm going to press these two ends together like this. Mm, all right? It's going to sap a lot of strength now. While I'm doing this, please be watching the voltmeter. You'll notice that the voltmeter would read this way. This key has not been closed. It hasn't been closed. So whatever value I am going to get here is the electromotive force, EMF, of the cell of this battery, okay? Which I told you, these two batteries, each of them is 1.5 uh, volts. So connected in series, the two of them would give us three volts. But you will notice something, even when I do this, normally this voltmeter reading will not read up to this three volts exactly. It will be very close to read, but it will not read up to read exactly. Reason is because of the internal resistance of this cell, which is also part of what we are going to check in this experiment after plotting the graph. We're going to determine the internal resistance, which reduced the total electromotive force of this battery, making it not to be up to three. So watch as I hold these two ends together, and then the watching the voltmeter. Are you ready? If the voltmeter would read, let me bring it close so you can us you can see it clearly. We go. Watch, please. Did you notice that the pointer moved? And for what I'm saying, it is at two point nine. Look at it. You can see the pointer, not exactly at 3. It is at 2.9. Let me see if I can raise this and bring it close. You can see 2.9, just quite close to 3, but not exactly 3. And this is the EMF of the cell. Now, if I, if I remove my hand from this battery, you notice that the pointer will go back. Like I said, the problem is from here. So in the case where I don't have battery casing, 
your hand will need to do a lot of work. Uh, then it's going to sap your strength, but uh, it's part of the, the process of running the experiment. Okay, so you see, I've uh, left this battery and the thing returned back. So all you need to do is record the EMF of the battery, which in this case, our E, as we saw, is equal to 2.9 volts. That is the electromotive force of the cell. Oh my God, 2.9 volts. So 0 0.1 volts is missing. Because like I said, the cell is supposed to be three volts since each of them is 1.5. Okay, each of the cell is 1.5. So technically it's supposed to be reading three volts. But now it is reading 2.9 volts. What happened to our 0 0.1 volts? Maybe I sold it, right? Okay, don't worry. There is something we call the internal resistance of the cell. We use small letter R to represent it when we are dealing with electricity studies. Are you following, right? And uh, that internal resistance is due to the chemical reactions that are taking place inside the cell, which reduces the total driving force, total electromotive force of this cell. So 0 0.1 volt of it dropped. Good. We are done with this. Let us proceed. The instruction said... Uh, we should set the resistance at 1 ohm, close the key, and record the potential difference V on the voltmeter. So watch. The 1 ohm resistance is already connected. Look at it. 1 ohms. All right. And so I am going to close the key at this point. I'm going to close the key at this point. And then we are going to check what the voltmeter reading is going to be with resistance of 1 ohm. So we go. I'm closing the key. Watch. All you just need to do is to put this here. I've closed the key, all right? The key is closed. Um, before I proceed to say this, please, the time that I held these two points of the battery together and this voltmeter read this way, sometimes someone may do a negative connection without realizing it. By the time you hold these two points of the battery, this pointer, instead of reading this way as it is meant to be, clockwise, it will be going anti-clockwise. Of course, there is no space for it to move further anti-clockwise. So if you encounter such challenge, it means your connection, uh, you know, they, they are not absolutely correct. Don't go scattering everything. What you just need to do, come to this terminal of the battery, interchange the connection of the wire. Remove this point, fix it here. Remove this point, fix it here. This voltmeter will start reading correctly. Uh, of course, it means that you've gotten your connection in the right way it should be. Anyway, that aside, I have closed this key. So let us see what the voltmeter reading is going to be when a resistance of one ohm was used. Once again, I'm going to hold this and then I would press the two terminals together. Watch the voltmeter. Watch the voltmeter. Let's get what the reading would be. All right. So you see it moved. There about... Let's see, this is really going to cause problem, this movement of these hands. But let's see, it is there about, uh, can see roughly 1 point, okay, there about 1.5, 1 1.5 volts to 1.6. All right, um, let's see, my hand, my hand that is holding this battery is shaking. So that's why we're not getting stable connection. 1.5 is what uh, repeated itself somehow. So this is going to be 1.5. And so all you need to do is to record the voltmeter reading corresponding to a resistance of 1 ohm. R equal to 1 ohm gave us the voltmeter reading that has potential difference V to be 1.5 volts. All right, to the 1.5 volt. There was a, at the time I tried this exactly with this connection, and this battery gave me 1.6. All right, so this 1.5 I'm getting, there, it's likely maybe due to error or perhaps because this battery has dropped over time, it's possible. Okay, now let us move on. We've done this. The next experiment we are to use two ohm resistor. Please, once you've taken your reading, you have to remove the key. You have to remove the key so that your battery will not run down. It, it, why the, there was no challenge in this case, even though I left the key there, is because uh, already the battery is not making, making good contact. So even if the key is there, there is no problem because the battery is not making good contact. If this battery was well connected such that I don't need to hold this, 
And of course, one can connect it even with this masking tape without holding this. Sorry that mine had to be this way, okay? Uh, if you are very careful as you are fixing this, there will be no need of holding this point like that. But like I said, the right thing that has to be done is using a battery case, okay? That will help you avoid this issue of going to press anything here. All right, so, um, and if that is the case that this battery or this cell is well connected, I don't need to hold this. Please watch. Just after you are done taking your reading, remove the key, open it so that this will be an open circuit, you know, so that this battery will not be discharging, so that the battery will not be delivering current to the external circuit. Okay, now in the second experiment, we are meant to use a resistance of 2 ohms. If it is resistance box that you are using, you don't need to remove what I'm about, because here I'm going to remove this 1 ohms and then fix 2 ohms resistor. Are you following, right? But if you are using resistance box, a resistance box already has, you know, all those resistance values. So all you need to do, whichever... Um, uh, resistance you are dealing with, you go there and then remove the cap of that resistance that you are using to run the experiment. For example, in the case of 1 ohms, in the resistance box, all the resistors are there already, so you just go to 1 ohms and pull off the cap of 1 ohms, remove it. Then you run the experiment. Every other uh, 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 cap or, or hole of the other resistors will be fixed. Now, if you are done with 1 ohm resistance, you want to try for 2 ohms, you go to that resistance box, Close back the cap of 1 ohms, pull off the cap of 2 ohms, just pull it off, you'll be seeing the hole there. Use it to run your second 2 ohm experiment. Do same for other ones. If you are done with the 2 ohms, take your reading, replace the cap, fix it back. Are you following right? To the 2 ohm resistor. Now I want to run that off 3 ohms. Go to the hole of the 3 ohms, pull off the cap. Are you following right? And then you carry the experiment out like that. I believe that your lab technologist will show you things like that if you are using a um, resistance box. But at this point, I'm going to remove this 1 ohm resistance and then connect 2 ohms resistance to it. So I am removing it. All right, so uh, I am fixing resistance of 2 ohms now. You can see that. So I'll fix it up. Like I said, you have to ensure tight connections, okay? Now, this is resistance of uh, 2 ohms. So I'm going to close the key. Are you following right? In order to complete the circuit, the key is closed. And then watch as I press back my battery, <laughs> the cell, the voltmeter will read, okay? So you watch as we do that. Let's see the potential difference corresponding to a resistance of 2 ohms. Let's see. All right, it's two volts. Two volts. You can see that. Good. It means you're going to record in the table of value for resistance of two ohms, resistance of two ohms, that we have the potential difference to be two volts. Okay? All right. Now the next is going to be three ohms. I don't have 3 ohms resistance. So if I am to carry out that of 3 ohms, all I have to do is to connect these two resistance in series. 2 ohms resistance and 1 ohms resistance. How do I do that? Simply, you are going to connect, you know, a wire from this end to this end. Does it make sense, right? Then the next wire will be from this end to this end. So you have something like this. Are you following? But let's see. Good, so you can see uh, the series connection now. This is two ohms connected serially with one ohm resist resistance. You can see that. Good, so this is series connection. Please take note from this point to another point of the resistor. And then this end connected to the key as usual. So let us close this. Uh, okay, the key here is closed already. And I'm going to hold this battery properly and see. Watch the voltmeter reading. So this is about 2.1, all right? The voltmeter reading in this case is 2.1 volts. That's the potential difference using three ohms resistance. So all you need to do, you record R, three ohms, and then uh, corresponding to it is the potential difference, which is uh, 2.1 volts. 
this is volts good so we've generated three values you could do same to obtain uh, that of five ohms resistance and uh, of course i have five ohm resistance here I'm going to remove this key and then of course disconnect this resistance this resistors so i'll disconnect them all right and then fix five ohms resistance i'll fix five ohms resistor there and carry out the experiment for five ohms resistor So this is our 5 ohms resistor fixed there. You can see 5 ohms. Now we're going to see what the reading would be, the potential difference. So once again, I'm going to close this key. After closing the key, I go back to my battery. And then we see this is reading 2.3. 2.3. That's what I'm getting. So it means that corresponding to a resistance of a resistance of uh, five ohms, then I got I got the potential difference to be two point three volts. All right. So all you just need to do is to tabulate this, tabulate the resistance values, tabulate the potential difference values, and then we are going to evaluate R inverse, V inverse and plot the graph of V inverse against R inverse. Now from the graph, we are going to obtain certain parameters like the slope of the graph, the intercept of the graph. Are you following right? And uh, of course, we'll evaluate a quantity K, which is equal to slope divided by intercept. All right, friends. So this is how we carry out this experiment, okay, in verifying Ohm's law. You notice something that in each case, as the resistance value increased, the potential difference also increased. For example, when the resistance is 1 ohms, the potential difference is 1.5. Okay? And then when the resistance was 2 ohms, I've increased the resistance value, the potential difference increased to 2 volts. When the resistance value was increased to 3 ohms, the potential difference increased to 2.1 volts. You see that when I use a, resistant, a resistor of resistance 5 ohms, you notice that the potential difference increased to 2.3 volts, verifying Ohm's law that voltage is directly proportional to what? Resistance. Well, I am going to present the table of value for this experiment and, of course, the graphical work. From the graph, you're going to evaluate the slope. We are going to evaluate the intercept of the, the graph and then we'll evaluate a quantity K which is equal to slope divided by intercept. And let me say this, that quantity, slope divided by intercept, which we call K, the physical significance of that quantity is important. All right? And we're going to see it after we are done with the graphical analysis. I hope you enjoyed this video lesson. Please kindly subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it to all the friends and scholars like you so that you can benefit from this video lesson. If you have a question, please leave your question in the comment section and I'll be there to respond. All right. Don't hesitate. Subscribe immediately so that once I upload any new content, remember the graphical work, you will be personally notified. Remember to turn on the notification bell so as to receive a personal notification. Thank you for watching. See you in the graphical analysis of this experiment.